Courage can't exist in a vacuum. For someone to be brave, they have to have faced a situation that evokes fear. And this concept is one of the core traits of one of the most efficiently written characters of the year. Welcome to a running series called Exploring Furin. My name is Pei, and today we're talking about how the dragon ran, but Stark didn't. Furin Beyond Journey's End has solidified itself as one of the best animes that has recently aired. It's built off of a foundation of really strong characters. It has an outstanding ensemble cast, which is especially true when you look at the main trio. And for me, near the top of that list of great characters is Stark, specifically because he fits the role of a supporting character so well. The writers use every second of screen time he gets effectively. And true to the name of being a supporting character, he is a catalyst that consistently enhances the characters and story around him. There's an entire video to be made talking about the subversion of having two female leads and a male supporting character in a fantasy anime. Partially because it's so well done, but mostly because it's so uncommon. But I think that's a video for another day, because today we're focusing on Stark and specifically his introduction. The way this character is introduced ties into this idea I've had since college, that bravery is not the absence of fear, but rather overcoming it. There's something about that contextualization that meant a lot to me, and I think it's actually a great lesson for a lot of different aspects of life. When I was growing up, it was easy to admire bravery. I had this assumption that people just weren't afraid. But as I got older, I realized that no one really has anything completely figured out. And despite what that implies, that makes bravery even more impressive. While competence can lead to security and both negative and positive experiences can make you more confident, the world is a crazy place and often the most competent people are pushing themselves outside of their comfort zone. A major part of being a human is diving into that world and accepting the fact that things aren't going to be perfect and then doing your best not despite that but because of it. Good media has taught me a lot of lessons in life. I've tried very hard to be good to people and very often just failed at that. Some of those mistakes have pretty seriously hurt people. And while all I can do now is acknowledge that and try to grow from it, I'm incredibly appreciative of the media that helped me make less mistakes. Because art has this remarkable way of resonating with people in a way that can teach lessons. And while we'll never actually be able to completely eliminate mistakes, we can minimize them. So when I see shows like Furin come along and highlight remarkable messages and themes, it's really exciting. So what's a lesson we can take from Stark's introduction? We find out that he showed up to a city in a time of peril. A solar dragon was wreaking havoc. And in an act of heroicism, he stood between the people of the city and the dragon. After a long standoff, eventually the dragon left, without a single blow being thrown. And while the city folk celebrated Stark as a hero, he was actually terrified the entire time, not really knowing what he was doing. With the looming threat of the dragon still at hand, Stark finds himself in a pickle. He can't abandon the city, so he stays and trains. But he also can't go fight the dragon, because it's really scary. Actually, the archetype of the coward in anime has been played out a couple different ways, some of which have been incredibly annoying, and I think that there'd be an interesting video there talking about that. I plan on maybe revisiting that at some point. But this circumstance with Stark is really fascinating. Based off of a tip from Aizen, Fern and Furin show up looking for a warrior to join them, and in the process, Furin offers to help Stark, saying that she only needs him to occupy the dragon for 30 seconds and she'll be able to take it out. Now this is where things get really interesting. Because while this leads to arguably one of the coolest anime scenes that I least expected from a series ever, there's a whole nother layer of depth on top of it with Furin comparing Stark to his teacher. Now, outside of the fact that this action scene is one of the best I've ever seen, this juxtaposition of two scared warriors is actually really fun. Not just because it has to do with the similarities in their characters, but because it's also related to their falling out. The scar that Stark originally shared was from a monster actually came from the hands of Aizen when he hit Stark without restraint during a sparring session. It seems like this conflict is what led to Stark leaving, and very in theme with the idea of bravery and fear, Aizen responded instinctually during that sparring session because he was afraid of the strength that his student was showing. And this, in an interesting way, highlights the bravery that Stark showcases in comparison to other characters that could be considered cowards. For Stark to face his fears, it doesn't take him being cornered with no other option or way out. Stark's courage is such an admirable trait because he chooses to put himself in situations where he feels like he's making the right decision despite his fear. He originally faced the dragon because he felt like he had no other option. He was forced to face his fear, not out of self-preservation, but to help others. And while he doesn't completely understand why, while he's around, the dragon hasn't returned. 
It's another great reason to like Stark as a character. He's using his power and strength, even with a lack of faith in it, to help others. It's the difference between letting your fears control you versus guide you. Because what's the point of fear? Think about all those quotes in movies and television shows where someone says, I don't know if you're stupid or brave. Most of the time, they're just stupid. It just so happens they're characters in a story that need to be protected. So often, especially in shonen, characters make incredibly stupid decisions that work out because of the raw power of will or plot armor. It's frustrating because it consistently undermines the stakes of the situation. Because when characters make stupid decisions consistently with no consequence, it leads to a break in immersion, the loss of that suspension of disbelief. Now I'm not necessarily advocating that we need to have darker stories with bigger consequences. I just want the characters to be smarter. That's part of what makes Stark's character so good, is his fears are justified. Based off of everything that's set up surrounding the dragon in Freerin, Stark should be afraid. Furin is one of the most skilled and accomplished mages in the entire world, and her strategy was essentially dropping aggro and consistently chipping away until you eventually kill it. Stark hasn't fought a monster before this moment, only trained. His fears are actually incredibly reasonable. But we end up getting kind of the best of both worlds. First, smart character writing, but then they also set up a situation that's still remarkably fun where he gets to be a hero anyways. It doesn't have to be one or the other because ultimately what Stark does is trust Freerin, a more experienced adventurer who has an incredible rapport not only with his master, but also as a member of the hero's party. So when his power finally exceeds his expectations, it lines up perfectly with the way the story has set up the situation. All of his training and lack of experience make this scene make so much sense. And it also helps prevent Stark from falling into that cliche of being excessively overpowered and then also unreasonably insecure. Because strong characters having self-doubt has never been the issue, it's the disconnect between the information that's been presented and how the characters respond. So for me, Stark's fears end up being the opposite of annoying. In line with what I was arguing in one of my previous videos, it ends up just being an incredibly charming character flaw that work beautifully in conjunction with the parts that make him so likable, like his selflessness. Because to have a character face something that is so scary he's literally shaking, that's admirable, and really, to its truest form, courage. Now, an important part of this lesson is not just to push yourself outside of your comfort zone or take leaps of faith when it's right, but specifically how this is paired with Stark's preparation. Because what ends up happening is when Stark pushes himself to actually face the dragon for 30 seconds, he realizes, only after the dragon's dead, that he didn't actually need Furin's help to take on this challenge at all. So the lesson is a little bit more complex than have faith in yourself. I think an important part of success in whatever endeavor you pursue is to properly prepare. And where this gets really tricky is it's hard to tell when you're ready to actually take on a challenge. There's inevitably gonna be some leap of faith, and if there isn't, you probably over-prepared. It's a weird balance that gets fine-tuned with iteration, but that doesn't make it any less admirable or impressive that Stark chose to take that leap of faith. He's an outstanding character in a story already filled to the brim with them. Proof in my mind that courage is not the absence of fear, but rather overcoming it.